Hello everyone, welcome to Self Love You. Here is another video where we're going to talk about when you lose yourself and you value someone else too much in a relationship and you have this patterning. We're going to talk about some ways to break the pattern, some ways to stop the pattern of giving yourself away and losing yourself to another person. Um, I think it st all starts with self-talk, how we're speaking to ourselves, the work that we're doing within ourselves, the journaling, the connection to self. Every day, we can take steps to become a little bit more in tune and friendly with ourselves. And that's important. When you're not in a relationship, it's important that you take that time to fortify yourself and to heal places within that need healing. So that means that if you experience negative emotion during the process of your day, instead of stuffing it and drinking or taking drugs or um, doing something addictive, instead of eating, instead of stuffing, that you're actually allowing yourself to sit within the negative emotion and follow the negative emotion as it flows. You know, negative emotions don't stay, but they're here. Our emotions tell us information about ourselves. So, a lot, you know, things like of that nature, allowing negative mo emotions to exist. You can study up on that. You can um, meditate. You can listen to your self-talk, the way that you're speaking to yourself, and you can begin to make adjustments and soften your self-talk. Little things like this every day build upon itself, and then you build yourself with your, your awareness that you exist. And as you become comfortable being yourself, focusing on yourself, focusing intently on your needs, focusing on taking care of yourself, starting with proper nutrition. Starting with proper nutrition, maybe um, vitamins, minerals, um, vegetables, healthy eating plan, Going to the grocery store, not eating out, not eating fast food. Taking time to eat in a mindful manner, mindfulness. Eating mindfully, eating regularly, not tearing yourself up. Going to the gym, going for long walks, going for runs. Doing things to move your body, to get your blood pumping, Peloton, biking, swimming, Zumba, yoga, karate. Those kinds of things help you to get connected to your body and stay connected to your body. So the whole focus of this video is to talk to you about staying connected to yourself in a relationship because if you're able to focus on yourself and get used to staying focused to yourself and, and really come into your body, come into your life, welcome to your life, come into your life instead of dissociating. Because a lot of people that experience trauma in childhood, some kind of attachment trauma, if you have narcissist abuse from childhood, if you have any kind of abuse from childhood, abuse you don't even know about, you may have a tendency to whisk through your life without focusing on yourself, without staying present in your life, without staying present in your body, and whisk through life just addicted to food, to substances, to television, to the internet, to whatever, friendships, whatever, drama but miss vital 
beautiful moments between you, yourself, and you. And it's, it's difficult. I will say it's difficult to be a person who's detached from your body, just detached and dissociated and depressed and feeling like you don't belong and feeling like you don't even know yourself. It's difficult for, to become, to go from that to someone who is in tune, in touch, centrally rooted and grounded in, in their, your own truth, where the focus of your life, of your day is you. So practicing this as a practice, as a meditation, as a lifestyle, every day, a little bit more, a little bit more, getting a little bit more in tune, focusing a little bit more on how you feel about yourself rather than worrying about how other people feel about you. Not being so concerned about how you, you know, look to others, but really being concerned about how you look to yourself and how you feel to yourself and, and really learning to stay in your own lane, to walk in your own lane emotionally and assertively with your back straight and knowing who you are every day, learning more and more who you are and becoming more connected to who you are will help you when it comes time to choose a romantic partner. Because I think it's important when you are in a relationship that you stay connected to yourself. And in the same way that you are connected to yourself when you're single, when you're not in a romantic relationship, you're able to stay connected to yourself and share your wonderful life with a partner, but not give everything away, not take your focus that you did have on yourself and your own eating and your own working out and your own values and your own healing and your own improvement and your own progression and put all of that in a, a another person. Because if you do that, you will be depleted and the other person won't respect that and you can't help someone else. So a lot of times, if you have a deficit of self-love, you're going to be attracted to people who have a deficit of self-love. And maybe you've gotten a little farther along the journey of healing and you may have something to offer that person and you think, well, I'll just, you know, give them a little help here and a little help there. And before you know it, because it's your pattern to subjugate your needs for the needs of another before you know it, if you're not aware and if you're not consciously rooted and grounded, then you're going to give yourself away and you're going to lose yourself in a relationship. And then your progress is going to stall. And then if the person is particularly abusive, they'll end up devaluing you for that and they'll put you down for that. And then suddenly you will become someone that you're not. Nothing like who you are at all. And then that person, that narcissist person, that toxic person will take what you have to offer, your focus, your energy, and then they will run away with it or they will go and cheat on you. So <clears throat> it, it's very important when you're entering a relationship to be aware of love bombing of people who try to get too close to you too quickly. Especially if you're someone who has a deficit in self-love in the past and you're learning to love yourself or you've learned to love yourself and you're discovering your worth and you're discovering who you are, then you have to be even more careful and keep people at a distance who are new and make sure that you are always putting yourself first it's not selfish to take care of yourself. If you are on an airplane and the airplane is going down, they tell you, or, you know, the oxygen drops, they tell you to, to give yourself oxygen before you even help your child. So it's important that you keep the focus on yourself 
even in a relationship, even as you are being overwhelmed with dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, love hormones, lust, desire, and even as everything seems so, so much of a whirlwind, and even as your tendency is to get tunnel vision and to be hypervigilant, it's really important that you stay grounded. You have a grounded practice, whether that be, um, well, you know, eating correctly, working out, meditation, mindfulness, journaling, staying connected with your friends, staying connected with your hobbies, focusing on things that do not involve the significant other, and also learning to say no, learning to put space between you and the significant other, learning to say, you know, I really need to spend some time by myself today. I would really love to spend time with you, but I need to do this for myself. Anyone who is a healthy person is going to be able to tolerate you taking space for yourself. And that's another way to suss out people that are negative for you. If someone punishes you or is passive aggressive or is pushing you to spend more time with you than you're ready for or not respectful of your need to take things slow, your need to stay connected to yourself throughout the process, then you know that this person is going to eventually be toxic for you because you have a tendency to give yourself away and lose yourself and overvalue the other person. So you've got to pull yourself in, in relationship. When you pull yourself in while you're single, and then when you come into a relationship, really fight against the current because it may be foreign to you. It may be foreign to you to love in a healthy way. It may be foreign. It may feel weird. And at first you may have to go through a feeling of, Ooh, this, you know, I don't really feel comfortable not focusing on the other person all the time. I prefer to focus on the other person and your adult self, your higher self has to come in and be the voice of reason and say, you know what? You need some balance in your life. You need to continue doing everything that you always do to make you feel good about yourself. And if you're not doing that, when you're in a relationship, you're in an unhealthy, toxic relationship that will eventually hurt you and will eventually cause you pain. And you'll have to be back at square. You won't be at square one, but you'll have to learn this. You have to learn this. You have to learn to stay rooted and grounded in your truth and in yourself, having strong boundaries, the ability to say no, the ability to not be hypervigilant, the ability to, to have, to self-soothe when you're unsure about your partner, because when you're with a, a new partner, there's a lot of uncertainty <clears throat> that occurs. And in a healthy relationship, you're able to handle the uncertainty through self-soothing techniques and staying connected to your body and staying connected to reality and not having tunnel vision and definitely not clinging and being codependent and watching for behaviors of the other person because you may still be attracted to unhealthy people. So watching for people who bait you to caretake them people who bait you to caretake them. That's, that's a whole video I need to do. You know, they have problems and, you know, you've got to let people deal with their problems themselves because you're not the healer of the world and everybody's problems are not yours. And you've got enough problems of your own. And if you can't see that for the moment, then that means you need to get grounded in yourself. Meditate, stay mindful. Continue your routine. Continue 
progression. You know, you should always be interested in meeting new people who have a high level of energy that are dynamic and that meet your growing criteria for connection. So you don't want to stop that just because you meet someone new. You want to continue progressing, continue being the best that you can be and not allow yourself to be taken over by the whirlwind, by the avalanche of a promise to be fulfilled, that fantasy to be fulfilled and complete and finally loved and finally approved and finally validated. You have to let go of that fantasy because it won't happen. You have to stay focused and grounded in the fact that you are validated and you don't need a whirlwind and you don't need a fantasy because you are real and you're here and that's all that matters. And if someone is right for you, then they are going to fit in with you and together you're going to be better. Together you're going to be stronger. So someone who comes into your life should not take you over. You should feel more like yourself instead of more like helping, more like fixing, more like suddenly, you know, what's important is what they're eating, how they're working out, how their problems are being solved, how they're progressing. That's not your focus. Your focus must be on yourself. The minute you hand your focus over, you've handed your truth over. And you're giving in, supply to the other because your focus is your supply. And I, I just realized that last night. Focus and supply are the same thing. So you want to pull your focus from the narcissist to yourself. And hopefully not be with a narcissist because someone who's healthy is going to have their focus on themselves and your focus on yourself. And then you come together and share your beauty. So that's all I have to say on this video. Um, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Your comments mean a lot. I appreciate you helping this channel to grow so we can get this information out to more people who need self-love. This is Jenna Ryan, and I'll talk to you soon.